Hey, it's Everyday Entrepreneurs here with the team. Calvin. Lamar. Handsome Phil. <laughs> like that. Ken. <laughs> hey, and today our topic is going to be finance. We have a special guest today, Kia Buckner from Horsey, Buckner, and Heffler. We're going to have her on the show. She's our... Anything you guys want to add? No, that sounds good. I look so forward to it. Excited. Hey, excited. Cool. Bring, this bring her in. Here we go. go. partner of Horsey Buckner Heffler okay. and she's going to tell us a little bit about how her firm uh, does business hopefully give us some insights and some information on some things that we can take away and you can take away as the viewers and the four of us everyday entrepreneurs we will chime in with some questions for her so Kia tell us a little bit about your firm how you got started give us a little color about you know what you do all right well, hello. I'm Kia Buckner, as my husband said. Horsey um, that out. <laughs> <laughs> Horsey Buckner Heffler, www.hbheffler.com. We are a minority certified firm, CPA firm, uh, within the greater Delaware Valley area, based in Philadelphia, and we are an accounting and advisory firm. Your traditional services, as well as um, some forensics, valuation, of course, tax audit. Um, okay. So I, hopefully that gave you some time. Oh, it did. All can right. I, can I ask one question? Absolutely. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Um, <laughs> Thank you. One question. With your firm, because um, people see the video and may want to call you, is there a certain size client you work with from maybe startup or you prefer more established clients just so we, the right people contact you? Thank you. So, Calvin, thank you for bringing that up. Um, let me take a step back. I am the managing partner of HBH, um, the CEO and chairman of the firm, Michael Horsey, uh, I have worked a long time with. And so collectively, we have many, many, many years of experience in excess of 60 years um, mm -hmm. within this business. And so to Calvin's point, um, one of the things that we've learned is that the segment of especially our minority population that's underserviced are those that are, you know, below the, you know, $10 million business, $5 million business that quite frankly, in the other firms that um, we've worked in in the past before we started HBH, they were... Um, uh, they they perceived us to be too big for them, too mm. large for them, nice. and not cost effective. Mm. And so one of the things that HBH is bringing to our minority circle, as well as to um, small, um, closely held businesses, is that we are a more cost effective um, choice as it relates to your accounting, tax, and advisory needs. Okay, right, thank you. That's good to know. That's good to know. All right. So, can you tell us a little bit about how HBH got started? Okay, so HBH got started um, June 1st of 2017. Uh, I was approached by um, our CEO and Chairman Michael Horsey, who I used to work for at uh, Mitchell and Titus wow. uh, in, the, in the field of accounting. We as minorities um, and as women are mm -hmm. very, very underrepresented. Mm. Um, minorities... I mean, it's it's less than five percent, if that that uh, even are yeah. in the space that we're in. Uh -huh. um, and then women, I mean, traditionally accounting and what I do is what we do is in public accounting. So what does that mean? That means that um, businesses, um, individuals, we service you. We're in a client serving business as opposed to you have account. You have the accounting function in corporate America. Um, where you have people who are responsible for closing the books mm -hmm. and, and um, budgeting, etc. In our realm, 
we um, service uh, clients, which is why they call it public accounting, and we issue opinions, we um, um, issue tax returns, and that kind of thing that, that have a certain stamp of approval. Um, and so um, uh, getting back to the point of um, Mike came to me and kind of said, you know, for the longest, there's a segment of small business that's really being um, underserved and, and doesn't feel that, um, you know, there's accountants and, and advisors out there to meet, to meet sure. their needs. And so thus uh, came the um, vision for HBH. Uh, now, before HBH was started, I uh, oversaw the audit practice of Heffler, Radichitz, and Syatta, who is our 49% partner. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the, the wonderful things and why we are able to provide cost-effective services is the fact that we have this 49% partner who, by the way, has been in business for 70, over 70 years, who has um, um, already had office space, training, technology, all the infrastructure that a startup business um, usually has to fund themselves. Mm -hmm. And so the beauty of HBH is because we have this 49% partner that's already established, we already have all of those things in place. And so we have kind of an intercompany arrangement um, that, that makes it more cost beneficial. Yeah. So that's good to know because I'll be honest, being an entrepreneur, you see it when you're below a certain size, you're kind right. of in limbo because that's people right. don't, really want to talk to you <coughs> because they're like, uh, and but you want to grow to that size and you need help getting there. Oh, so yes. where do you find and the That's problem is point. what you find, which I'm surprised, that five percent that you mentioned, mm -hmm. is that because there are many people who do it but they're not licensed CPAs like yourself? Because it seems like there's more than five percent of people doing it. Okay. So well, when I say five percent or less, mm -hmm. it's really less yes. than that. A lot yeah. less than that. But that's in public accounting, okay. right? So in in the in the the track that I went, as mm -hmm. opposed to going into corporate America, mm -hmm. as opposed to going into government, okay, um, uh, or what we call uh, another word is um, private sector for, for right. in corporate America. But the important part is yes, you have those who who go the path of CPA and those mm -hmm. who are just just accountants. Regardless, the the statistics are such that just in general, as minorities, that is not something even from a college major that oh, wow. a lot of us are majoring in. Okay. Pure. Okay. Um, there's there's some obstacles to that. Um, even now, the laws have changed where to get sort of to become a certified public accountant, you now have to have 150 hours of. Um, college credits right. mm -hmm. whereas back in my day you did not so what does that mean that means you have to be in school for another five years um, a lot of students are parlaying that into getting their masters right. um, but again you, you have some um, funding issues you know how are you going to pay for that extra mm -hmm. year so so right. so so accounting may not be as attractive as a major for that reason as okay. well right. so there's, yeah, there's a lot so of different obstacles dynamics. and yeah. dynamics mm -hmm. correct yeah. Yeah. um and to be quite quite <coughs> frank um because as i mentioned the the predominance in in the industry is typically caucasian males right. um they Many many minorities do not see people that yeah, look like them who yeah, are no. doing this, so they, right. they don't have they don't have a feel for what it involves, right. or mm -hmm. what jobs are out gotcha. there that are in the accounting field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. About the entrepreneurs, is that something that is in your guys' range, or is that something that you would refer to another firm? No, so entrepreneurs, um, small businesses, um, is is in our sweet spot, and and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Um, we like to help um, to advise and not just be your accountant. So mm -hmm. those um, businesses, and I mean this, those are your lifelong clients. Right. So, mm -hmm. so, so if you're there with them mm -hmm. from, from the start, you know, and, and you're a trusted advisor, mm -hmm. they're going to be endeared to you to kind sure. of stay yeah, with sure. you sure. and understand that Hey, I remember when, and you've you've brought me to this point. Right, right, right. So, so um, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, 
we like to be there from the ground right. floor. And, and I'll tell you that um, part, of, part of what we like to do is educate. Mm -hmm. And a lot of entrepreneurs do not understand the fact that accounting is really the language of business. Right. It's mm -hmm. the eyes and ears yes, of management. Right. Yeah, and sure. the data that mm -hmm. accounting shows you, right. you know, um, mm -hmm. on a consistent basis, really helps you make business decisions. Right. Gotcha. No, that's well, and, and, you know, this, so as y'all can see, I'm passionate about this topic. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm, I'm so thrilled. But, I'm about so thrilled. Money, really but I'll about. be honest, four or five years ago, my mentor sat me down and asked me if I understood finance. And I was like, yeah, I have an MBA. I didn't. I got, I did the coursework, right. but to hear you say it, it's really important. Until I dove into my QuickBooks and my finance, mm -hmm. you know, I thought as an entrepreneur, you do your service, you get paid, mm -hmm. but there's so much more involved where it, it you, every day I'm in the books. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at things, I'm, an, I'm analyzing my costs, material costs, um, so and it's great to hear that you guys work because I can say for the past, you know, 10 years in the early stages, I didn't know what to talk about. Right. Simple things of making decisions on, do I lease a van, buy a van, right. new, you, right. like these are things that you need to talk to and you're like, you do it, then you find out, oh, that wasn't the right thing to do, huh? <laughs> but it's good to have somebody to work with. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. And, and, you know, you talk about what are some of the common, um, missteps or, or misconceptions uh -huh. that you run into with entrepreneurs is one of the common things is that they don't value the the, the wealth of knowledge mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. use of mm -hmm. uh, an accountant. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of entrepreneurs say that they can do it themselves. Right. You know, they can do the accounting themselves, but at some point you're going to hit a wall that mm -hmm. you can't do your business mm -hmm. as yeah. well as keep sure. track of, of all the yeah. all the um, uh, uh, financial uh, mistakes. Are there other things that you would say that you see new businesses do or fail to do? Um, sure. So so still sticking on the importance of uh, a CPA. Uh, of course, I'm a little biased and I'm not <laughs> suggesting that your accountant has to be a CPA. But what I'm saying is that, um, number one, you should, you, should, if you, you should definitely make sure that if you're hiring some, someone um, to be your controller or, what, or your accountant, to make sure that they really have the background that you need and they understand your industry. Because but you have to make sure you have somebody who's competent. Okay. Um, on that same um, note, one of the other things I will say is, and this is another reason why you can't be the kind of jack of all trades, is you have to rely on your accountant to, for your compliance as, yeah. aspects, yeah. right? Yeah. So your tax filings, yeah. your quarterly um, yeah. payroll taxes, yeah. um, you know, anything from a compliance standpoint, even your lending agreements. Sometimes yeah. um, financing yeah. agreements call for yeah. um, audited financial statements or quarterly yeah. statements yeah. to yeah. be submitted. Yeah. You don't want to miss key deadlines sure. because that's a reflection on your business sure. um, and could have implications in terms of penalties and fees mm -hmm. sure. um, as well as uh, increasing um, your interest rate when it comes time to renew. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. 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 so if Phil was just telling us a little bit about this as well, I mean, you know, you were talking about uh, quarterly payments as well. Right. Yeah, I was telling Kevin that when I started my business, I didn't I didn't go to business school, so I don't know all the rules about and yeah, I didn't yeah, have, yeah, have the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. At the time right. I had a, an accountant, um actually when I started the business I was just using H and R block or mm -hmm. those uh, companies. Good, yeah. Um so I didn't really have a personal account for the business. And when I wasn't making a lot of money, it didn't really matter. But once mm -hmm. the money started to, to raise and I didn't mm -hmm. pay taxes, I a baller. then I <laughs> and then I um I submitted my taxes through an accountant finally at that time. I got hit with this huge bill and I didn't know where, I, I wasn't used to it. Uh -huh. you know? And um, so he told me that I should have been paying every quarter. I should have uh -huh. forecasted what my business was going to make and how much that impacts my tax and prepaid that each quarter That's so right. that I didn't, when I submit my taxes, it's not going to hit me with this huge show. Sure. And uh, so that was a, a hard lesson learned because I had to do a payment plan and right. pay so much per month sure. just up for four months and there was a yeah. penalty attached to it and all that. Yeah. So um, people may not know that. And yeah. something so to keep That's in right. Mind. So other things from day to day standpoint that you would recommend for your clients. Right. And yep. um, it's critical 
that you're now using accounting software so that you can get the reported data that, that you sure. need. Mm -hmm. um, and I mentioned the fact that, you know, a lot of times when you go to ask for money, I don't care if it's, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. e even if it's even if it's private funders, it doesn't even have to be a, right. a financial right. institution. Right. Right. People are going to want to, they are, wanna see. nobody's just going to write you a check. Mm -hmm. People are going to want to see, well, what, what, <laughs> what, what, what has your financial position been sure. for the right. last, you right. know, three, three years? years? Mm -hmm. Have you been making sure. money? Have you been losing money? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what's going mm -hmm. on? And what are you budgeted to do sure. in in the next year? Right. So so I say all of this to say, if you haven't invested in accounting software and putting all of your transactions in that, please do that. Mm -hmm. The other piece is make sure that you're consistently looking at the reporting um, and generating reports, even if it's basic balance sheet, income statement, mm -hmm. um, financial statements, and understanding what that means on a month-to-month -month basis and even for the entire year. Right. The other piece mm -hmm. I would add to that is understanding your cash positions. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Cash is king every month. Mm -hmm. As a partner, I really am learning that um, definitely in, in it right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you really have to know where you stand currently and where you're projected to stand right. sure. in, you know, in the next month. I mean, because... Listen, you've got bills you have to pay, you got a business to run, you gotta pay yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you really need to know where, where right. you stand with that. And the only way you're going to know is be, right. having having all of these transactions yeah. reported so that you can you can okay. generate um, these type of reports. Right. And, yes. and even with having accounting software, you still need an accounting bookkeeper. Because I do transactions where I'll take large sums of money out of the bank yeah. to go buy something in cash. Mm -hmm. Well now it pulls from my bank <laughs> statement. I now have a transaction going in that says I took four thousand. Right. So right? What was that for? Now I have these receipts for four thousand. Mm -hmm. If I put it in, does it double count? Like it's all this stuff yeah, sure. that yeah, you yeah. don't realize. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can manage the basic transactions, but it's having someone to say, "Hey, what do I do in this situation?" Right. Or no. even we've gotten to the point where we clash transactions for a project. So I want to know every time how much I'm spending per project. But the only reason I even knew to do that was I met with an accountant. Right. right? I didn't know anything about yeah. it. And at that time, we were just grouping everything. Uh -huh. It was a mess. Uh -huh. So, you know, two most important things in business, lawyer, accountant. <laughs> That's, That's very my experience. True. That's okay. very and then everything true. else, I mean, some other stuff is important. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you. If you got those two, you'll be successful. That's right. true. I've done it That's where true. I didn't, and it, it's a tough road. Mm -hmm. But it's good to have another SME, subject matter expert to talk about. Let's talk about that for a second, right? You mentioned something about classing transactions yeah. or categorization, right? Right. So for the folks that don't know, can you tell us what that means? So Calvin has a construction business. He wants to know um, per job mm -hmm. how that, what's his realization? You know, did he make money? Did he come on budget or under budget or over budget? And, and how can you use that as a predictor for how to price exactly. the next mm -hmm. job, right? The advantage of keeping track of these um, financial transactions by project or by um, code or classification is that you want to be able to um, fine tune your projections or your um, budgeting, your proposals, your fees for future engagements based off of the level of effort, gotcha. the time mm -hmm. and expense that, that you're incurring currently. Gotcha. So you want to kind of look back at what you did in each job and figure out how you can better, you know, That's better right. the process, That's right. repeatable That's right. process. Hopefully you will ultimately make money off. Right. That's yeah. it. Okay. That's it. Yeah. What did you say that also helps, um, like... Manufacturing. Well, manufacturing and, and not even just like analyzing, quote, like your dollar. Where you may be spending more money at. Right. Money That's at right. Year. That's exactly and then right. Cutting back, or maybe you can help sure. help the client out with a strategy. Like right. Okay, maybe you know you're spending too much here. That's right. Want to cut That's back. right. That too, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. we have to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I spend a lot of time looking at books. And do you spend a lot of time? With I do. Books? I should do it more. Yeah. To be honest with you, but mm -hmm. I mean, I kind of have a general idea. Yeah, because you things. would be like for me, I'm amazed at the things I find, like little things that you don't think about, but it adds up, like. You made spoons, like you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. napkins. 
you may be set more spoons. Well, you may find out your employees is taking them if you got college kids <laughs> back to their dorm room, right? right? right. And, That's and, right. Good stuff. point. And you like only oh, three hundred <laughs> people came in, but I got six hundred spoons. Not checking out. Right. Right. I got right. six hundred yeah. spoons yeah. gone. Absolutely. Right. But well, you don't point, you don't think about it because you say, oh, what's a spoon? Right. Right. But then right. when you like, why yeah. am I? Yeah. And that's what I said. I started looking at. Everything you know, mm. we provide cell phones. I looked at data, mm. guys. Mm. I'm like, whoa, wait, whoa, what are you doing? This is for <laughs> work. Yeah, 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 right, right. right. You right. right. on your own time. time. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and then the times, <laughs> right? Too, it's like this was eight o'clock at night, and what's yeah, right? You know, why are you right. calling the Philippines? Right. 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 And the thing is, because at first, I'll be honest, before right. when I first started. I was like, all right, that's a big deal. That was big corporation mentality. Mm-hmm. Right? right. Great point. I had to Great ch- change my mindset. Now it's fine. No, no, no. Wait, wait. <laughs> that 10 cents makes a difference. <laughs> you know? And I never thought I was going to be that guy. But from the finance, I'm, I don't want to say arguing. I'm strongly discussing <laughs> right. with vendors or whoever sure. that overcharge yeah. me. Or, yeah. I'm yeah. like, wait, yeah. I got 27 pieces yeah. of wood. Right. You charge me for 30, I'm going to need that eight bucks back. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. but yeah. in sure. the past, I'd be like, ah, great point. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. a great point. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. no, absolutely. You got to do what you got to do. I mean, mm-hmm. even samples that we get from vendors, I mean, they charge us for them unless we bring them back. Right. So I make sure I bring them all right. back because right. right. it's all money out of your pocket, right? right? Mm-hmm. right. Which is a great segue into. You know, what are the things that I can write off? You know, it, What I think about it, yeah. for example, I had to learn, and that came from working in corporate America because mm-hmm. we could expense it, but yeah, sure. if I meet with a client, I always pay. Mm-hmm. And one of the main mm-hmm. reasons is I want to have write off. I apply to their project. <laughs> they think I'm a nice guy, which I am. But, <laughs> but I do need right. some write offs. We meet sure. at Starbucks for a cup of coffee, Correct. or if right. we grab, yeah. I meet at a restaurant. Right. You know, point. it's the little things that. You know, hey, I get it, I, sure. and, and I use, I've gotten in the habit of just using my card because that document and yeah, absolutely. not plugging QuickBooks again, but the transaction right. goes directly in, and mm-hmm. I have a record yeah. of it. No, mm-hmm. that's a great point. So Calvin brought up um, meeting with um, clients and and having that be a business expense. Mm-hmm. With the new tax reform, oh, see? Nah. you are limited in terms of what you can write off your 50% um, oh. meals and entertainment mm, and, wow. uh, deduction. Okay. The limitation now is that the entertainment aspect mm. is no more. Wow. So let's so let's say no, wow. no. So let's say you take you have a you have a client that you normally take to like an Eagles game, go so Eagles, mm-hmm. six or, mm-hmm. Sixers mm-hmm. or Flyers mm-hmm. or what have you. Mm-hmm. That's considered entertainment, so that's no longer deductible. Wow. Really? Meals are fifty uh, percent of meals are, okay. um, and uh-huh. it, it's even expanded now that if you have an in-house um, cafeteria right. or what have you, that counts as, as mm-hmm. meals. Um, Etc. or meals on your right. company premises or whatever, mm-hmm. but entertainment is no more. Well, you well, know what's interesting? The most mm-hmm. interesting thing about that whole point is everyone looks at the benefit of the tax laws and say, oh, it's going to help the business. Exactly. That alone now hurts it does. entertainment, meaning sports, because I won't buy, buy season tickets anymore. Right, mm-hmm. right. Or right. things That's like that that we yeah. can give away. Because, yeah. right. you know, I don't write it all. I mean, right. I can Isn't enjoy it, but... Right. Right. Yeah. Isn't this something that they're doing this at a time with teams in this region or... Yeah. <laughs> <Sally>. <laughs> 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 Took forever to get it. it Look, like, you know wow. what? We, I guess you know we can't. It's just a coincidence that the Eagles happen to win. <laughs> and, you know we got Trump in office. Well, like, now this is not a political show, so we're not going to get into that. Just uh, but one of the good things we were talking about earlier was. You gotta look at the tax uh, codes. You gotta look who who our president is right now, Correct. and figure out right. where you fit in. Right. That's right. So you, right. Too, you know, exactly. get over the and I might have been doing too. Day one crying, but get over the crying, get over the whatever, and like get in where you fit in. Right. So right. Yeah. this is business, right? Right. right? right. Whether it's four years or whether it's eight years, there'll be somebody else. You right. might not like that person either. So it's if they're building structures around the taxes, you need to understand them. So your company can benefit from right. whatever it is. Mm. And, and so, what's the most so important point. thing of all of this? Yeah. Hire an accountant. That's yeah. right. Because I just That's learned right. something today. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. That's what yeah. we all did. We did. That's, right. That's, That's, an effect. Effect. That's, That's an effect now. That's an effect now. Right. So for starting in 2018, okay. starting in 2018, um, th- this is the tax reform that, mm-hmm. that yeah. uh, you're, you're going to have to live with. Um, and, and what I will tell you is two things. One is the um, corporate tax. 
used to be graduated based on what your income net income mm -hmm. level is. Now it's a flat rate of twenty one percent. Period. Mm -hmm. Regardless gotcha. of whether you earn one dollar or a million dollars. So okay. I know this is a specific question, mm -hmm. but there's different types of corporation. Is that C and S or is it one? Right. Or the other? So S is pass through. Right. Right. So I'm talking about C corps. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now, if mm -hmm. you want to learn more, please <laughs> visit mm -hmm. hbheffler.com. Um, sure. Because we have been doing kind of a road show on nice. all of the tax reform awesome. um, highlights and tailoring it to your specific business or, or audience mm -hmm. um, that, that uh, wants this type of um, training. Because you should be educated on this as well, sure. especially now at the beginning of the year, so you can put plans in place. Um, from a tax planning perspective so that come December you're in a more advantageous position um, when it comes to filing your taxes. That's great. Gotcha. I, do, I do have another mm -hmm. question uh, pertaining to that. I guess it would be more pertaining to like travel, but i say if we were to fly a client in mm -hmm. and lodging, would that still be something that we could write off since it's, mm -hmm. would that be considered the entertainment, you know what I mean, or would it be... Let's hmm. consult your tax advisor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because these specific circumstances <laughs> require require, gotcha. right, require yeah, research. Yeah. But I would say that um, you're probably okay with that particular um, scenario. Gotcha. Still meeting the um, gotcha. definition. Because that doesn't necessarily deduction. meet the definition of entertainment. Correct. Right. That's kind of Correct. business travel. Yeah. Right. Right. Correct. Correct. Um, Correct. Correct. No. Okay. Yeah. But what I like here is perhaps... The everyday entrepreneurs may set up a forum where we come together. If you guys will come speak to us, sure, absolutely. Because absolutely. I wonderful. think there's a, a bunch of entrepreneurs that, yeah. you know, my partner and I, Deidre, talk about it. Mm -hmm. and we're so confused because we're right. even asking, mm -hmm. do we go from a C to an S and right. all the different things and, yeah. and then great, how great it all point. comes together. Yeah. So, um, uh, I think that. Uh, it, once again, it just emphasizes how important an account Absolutely. is to help Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So that's, that's a good point. So just a real, what are the things that uh, small businesses or entrepreneurs should look at when they're trying to get loans for a business standpoint? Um, coming to your firm to get a financial statement? Like, what are those things? Okay, so to start off, I would say this, and this is the model that, that we live by. Mm -hmm. You're strapped for cash flow. You do not want to fund payroll through a financing arrangement mm -hmm. if you can help it right. now my um, advice is we're, we're in a client service capacity what we look to do is if we have large engagements that we need to um, fund and for example it's with a public sector mm -hmm. um, client who typically mm -hmm. and we're subcontractor mm -hmm. who typically pays you know after 30 days after they get paid so it's a timing thing and you um, want to make sure that the job keeps on going successfully mm -hmm. um, but you don't want to be strapped for cash flow that's a good scenario to kind of get into a financing arrangement or some mm -hmm. arrangement with a, with mm -hmm. a um, financial institution or private investor so mm -hmm. I just wanted to put that caveat out there that you want to be careful not to try and fund payroll because you're getting into this vicious cycle yes. of um, having to pay that down and gotcha. and, and what have you. Sounds like revolving debt from a credit card. Correct. Yeah. Right. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. But when you are in a, in a good standpoint um, where you would like to kind of shop around for a line of credit needs or, or that that kind of thing, yes, as, as Kevin mentioned, um, the first thing that they'll probably ask you for is tax returns as well as financial statements. So mm -hmm. it goes back to our earlier discussion about making sure that you put your financial transactions in some type of accounting mm -hmm. um, software mm -hmm. because people are going to want to know why should I, I put my trust in you to give you this money. I want to be assured that I'm going to get the money back. Now, mm -hmm. That's not to say that you won't be um, lent, you, you won't be able to borrow money, but you also want to try and get it at the most beneficial interest rate mm -hmm. um, as, as possible. And I'll be quite frank with you: the the, the more um, backing that you have, and and the more financial history that you have, the better the interest rate, the better mm -hmm. the deal can be. Mm -hmm. The other advice I would say is if um, you're starting out. You don't have a lot of financial history. 
Don't try and go to the large major right. uh, national banks. Go to a smaller kind of local bank mm -hmm. um, who, who's, who's, who's more vested in the community mm -hmm. yeah. and has a spend that they have to adhere to just as a part of their mission in terms of reinvesting oh, wow. back gotcha. into okay, community um, okay. um, like businesses. Win -win. Right, right, right. <coughs> right. Okay. So you like want to focus in on the smaller banks right. and even the black-owned banks. I mean, here in Philadelphia, you know, I am getting, giving them a shout-out, but United Bank of Philadelphia right. is dedicated mm -hmm. to um, small businesses and sure. small minority right. businesses. Right. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, That's no, so I learned that too. I yeah. mean, someone had advised us to do it. Uh, one thing that you probably also want to also be prepared for, a lot of times they ask you to personally guarantee it. That's true. You right. know, as yeah. and what's interesting is... That's very true. Yeah. I'm still trying to understand and learn because I'm assuming the heads of J&J &J or Starbucks or whatever, they probably don't personally guarantee the <laughs> loan. Yeah, so how do you dollars. get... But yeah, yeah, yeah. But how do you get your business to that yeah, point? Because if your business is doing a million a year and you're yeah. borrowing 10000 I mean... Yeah, I can see if your business did a million, you ask them for three million. Right. Uh, yeah. But you know, yeah, it, it's how do how you yeah. get the business? Because I mean, it's as little things as a car loan for your mm. a vehicle. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, sure. All these things want personal guarantees, and how do you get the business to the point where it's fully independent of you? Yeah. Right. The other thing I was going to say with the whole uh, financing and and getting into financing. Do not sign anything unless you have an attorney mm -hmm. or somebody with legal um, um, background looking over what it is that you're getting obligated sure. mm -hmm. um, to. Because yeah. a lot of line of credits um, may have a pay down um, um, provision where you have to pay it down to zero and it has to remain at zero for a certain amount of time before mm. you can borrow against it mm -hmm. again. Mm. So be mindful of things sure. like that. Um, be mindful of the covenants that are that are in um, different loan agreements. Covenants mm -hmm. are um, financial or um, non-financial, um, basically uh, stipulations that are a requirement of the borrowing mm -hmm. that you must adhere to. And if you don't, there are repercussions such as they could call the debt immediately mm -hmm. when you violate them. Sure. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm. Totally afraid, right? The moment. But, uh, <laughs> what about other any other little things that we should be thinking about? I mean, starting a new business, or we got the keys of make sure you have some type of fin uh, finance mm -hmm. um, consulting going on. Yeah. Yep. We always talk about legal, so mm -hmm. you just got it. You just got to have it, right? Right. Um, you just remind me one thing is read the contracts, <laughs> right? right? So exactly. and, you know we always try to skim through. Like, okay, what does it say? And then you know someone at the place always gives you a little blur, but this is why you're signing it. Mm -hmm. No, read it, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. read it right there. Um, anything else you guys think that are key to from a financial standpoint that you, in your own businesses where you say, hey, you know what? This is something I didn't think about and I should have. So payroll. Mm -hmm. um, okay. One one of the things that uh, you know the, the gentleman asked me was. You know, should you get, should can you do your own payroll? Mm -hmm. Should you get a payroll service mm -hmm. provider? I say hands down, get a payroll service provider. Mm -hmm. I will caution you that you don't necessarily have to go with the ones that you've um, heard of that are everyday household names like the ADPs and the paychecks and what have you. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of other smaller right. payroll providers sure. out there. Before you sign on a dotted line with a payroll provider, I would ask them to speak to their current clients so mm -hmm. that you um, get a sense of their knowledge of your business, mm -hmm. how long they've been in business, uh, and, and some, of, some of their um, okay. credibility and, and what have you. There's a lot of shams out of here with payroll providers as mm -hmm. well. But the key thing is, is that you want to employ somebody external to, to handle that because, again, there are compliance issues. You have certain payroll mm -hmm. filings, tax filings that mm -hmm. have to be done as of a certain period of time, mm -hmm. and you can pay dearly. Um, if you do not comply, right. there's mm -hmm. also overtime rules that have mm -hmm. gone into effect within the past year to, to uh, six months um, that if you do not comply, you can pay dearly as well. Okay. All right. Well, I think now that we've uh, got our finance expert on board <laughs> and she just kind of scared the bejesus out of all of us, <laughs> um, no. I think we're going to wrap this section. Lamar, would you like to leave the viewers with anything? I uh, just want to thank you for the time. Thank you. And, uh, you know, spending, giving us knowledge about what, and everyone here, 
and the audience uh, about what, you know, about the importance of having a financial advisor and a firm, an accounting firm, someone who, who can help us run your business properly. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Don't be scared. It's, it's, uh, we, we're in this together with you, and the, the further you go, the growth, um, and, and your financial success is mm -hmm. our success. Mm -hmm. Nice. Cool. Yeah, I, would, Phil? I would say definitely, <laughs> uh, I echo what Calvin said, how important it is to have an accountant because so many of those write-offs, I had no idea that, sure. that I could write them off, you know, using your home office or, yes. Yes. you know, mm -hmm. using your, um, you pay tolls to go across the bridge because I'm in Jersey versus yeah, Philadelphia sure. and mm -hmm. right. all those other different write-offs. So definitely keep that in mind um, sure. and ask your accountant. Gotcha. Cal? And I'll just say what I've been saying the whole <laughs> day. Learn about finance and yes. choose a person to speak with because it is so important to help run your business. Yeah, so absolutely. Right. And I guess I'll wrap it up and say, you know, joking about being scared, but don't be scared. You're an entrepreneur. You're out there right. for a reason, right? That's so right. If you were scared, you'd be home doing something else and not watching this. Right. So, uh, but definitely, and I had to learn this myself and learning it right now, all your transactions that go towards a business, file them away, use okay. them as write-offs. That's what you're in business for, right? Yeah, right? So take the tax laws to your advantage. Hopefully that one hasn't changed. Right. Um, and write them off. But, you know, let us know if there's other topics or questions or things that you want to get to Kia. She's mm -hmm. already gave her website, but you want to give it again? www.hbheffler, H-E-F-F-L-E-R, all one word, dot com. Nice. Mm -hmm. And obviously we've talked about ours all the time, but the everydayentrepreneurs.com. Send us a note. Let us know if there's other topics uh, that you want to talk about. And we'll see you soon. Yeah, see you subscribe. Soon. All right. That's subscribe. Absolutely. Yeah. Subscribe. Right. Mm -hmm.